What's going on guys, it's Dale here from Demsec and Hack5 have graciously once again provided us with one of their new products and this is the Packet Squirrel. So the Packet Squirrel is this like magical little man in the middle device. It's got two ethernet ports on either side. It's got a micro USB on uh, one side for power. On the back, we've got a standard USB 2.0 port. Uh, on one side, we've got a little, little clicky button. And on the right, we have the slider, which is the payload selection or arming selection switch. So I'm really excited about this device because it's like the first device I've had which actually has applications for, you know, everyday people. People who don't necessarily want to use this and, you know, man in the middle some IP camera and steal all of the, steal all the packages, all the packets, packages, packets from it. <laughs> what I'm going to be doing with this today is setting it up as like an automatic VPN connection. So if I'm ever, you know, anywhere with Ethernet and don't particularly trust it, I can plug this in first. This will establish a VPN connection over to NordVPN and on the other side will provide my internet with a NATed connection through that VPN so everything that passes through this is totally encrypted. So with that said, let's just get over to the computer and actually start, you know, playing with this thing. Let's see how we actually get it set up. So I'm just looking how to get this thing actually booted up and how to SSH into it. I found a quite good uh, little, little image here on the Hack5 website itself. Just because I was confused, you know, which Ethernet is which, because there's no real markings on the device. So where you actually apply the power, that's the Ethernet in. And that's what we're going to be interested in. So that's the one that, uh, once we flip it into arming mode, which is this switch closest to the full-size USB 2.0 port, um, that's, that's the one that we need to plug in to get SSH access to this. So I'm just going to set that up now, and let's see if we can SSH into it. So I'm pretty sure that my PC here is going to be without internet whilst we're actually SSH'd into the packet squirrel. So um, what the plan is, is to actually go ahead and download all the things I'm going to need ahead of time. So I'm going to go grab my uh, config files for NordVPN, uh, my credentials for NordVPN, all that kind of information. Just so once we get this, once we get SSH'd into this thing, we've got everything ready to upload and go. So I've just plugged that in now and I'm getting a green flashing light and I've lost all internet connectivity which is to be expected. So what I'm going to do now is ensure that I do have an IP address on the uh, 172 range which it mentions. So uh, command prompt IP config. And I'm going to look for my actual ethernet adapter um, which I'm struggling to find if I'm honest. I'm saying it's disconnected, oh, but we've got a blue light now. Are we uh, Do we have an IP address yet? Um, Ethernet saying media disconnected. Odd. So it seemed like I had a bit of uh, an issue with my Ethernet cable then because it, you know, just wasn't appearing to be connected. Uh, I've replaced the Ethernet cable, so now we should be working, we should be in business. Uh, let's do IP config. And then we've got, we've got a 172 address. So now we should theoretically be able to open putty and uh, SSH into this thing. And we have got a successful uh, SSH session. Um, the username here is root and the password is hack5squirrel. Which is a bit of a problem because that relies on my ability to spell squirrel. Um, and there we go, we got in second time. Turns out I can spell squirrel. So now that we're on here, we can do ls and we see version, so let's cat version, let's see which version of the firmware we've got. We've got 1.0. I believe there is an update, but we won't be doing that right now. Uh, we're going to have a look in the payloads folder, and here we're going to have three switch folders. So let's go through each folder and let's see what's in these by default. So um, switch 1 is what we're after. And that's got payload.sh, cat payload.sh. Uh, so this will do a TCP dump and spit the data to the S, uh, to a USB drive, which is quite nice to have just by default. Uh, switch 2, let's have a look at switch 2. Here we have spoof host, uh, so I've just been looking and this is like a ready to go um, DNS like poisoning attack, poisoning, DNS hijacking, it's probably hijacking. Um, but yeah, it'll automatically uh, with, you know, URLs in this folder and host names in this folder, it'll automatically go ahead and uh, spoof DNS replies. So if you wanted to, you know, man in the middle certain pages, you can do that. 
Let's have a look in Switch Free. Oh, LS. Which actually has an OpenVPN script ready to go, and this is what we're actually going to be utilizing today. So if we cat out payload.sh, uh, let's have a quick look at what this is doing. Um, so it sets the DNS server to 8.8.8.8. Um, you have to set this to allow clients to use the VPN. And that's what we're going to be using because we want this set up as like a ready to go uh, plug in Ethernet into, you know, some Ethernet you don't really trust into this device, into our laptop and have a nice encrypted session. So essentially all we have to do is grab our OpenVPN config from uh, our VPN provider, drop it in here with our credentials and it should just work. Um, so yeah, let's try that. So in order to go ahead and get those config files across, I'm going to be using WinSCP. And when SCP allows you to essentially do file transfers over SSH, which is why SSH is the best protocol. If there was a competition of protocols, SSH would win it. So you log in with the same credentials, same IP address, accept yes, and we will get a nice little window here with payloads. And this is the one we're going to be changing. So I have a folder here which I've downloaded called NordVPN configs, and this is on my local machine. Let's just make this slightly bigger. Um, and I'm looking for UK96. So UK96 is the server I'm going to go for, so we're going to transfer that over. We're going to delete the original config.ovpn. And then we're going to rename this to config.ovpn. And that isn't all we have to do. We also want to edit this file, so we're going to edit the config. So in order to have our um, credentials automatically entered, because we're not going to be able to search into this device to set it up, is in this config file, and I'm going to be doing it, I don't know, let's do it here. No, here. Um, I'm going to add a line, and this line, what it needs to say is off user dash pass, oh, not with the brackets, dash pass, and then pass.txt. And what we're telling this to do is to check a file called pass.txt for our username and password for the service. Obviously, we don't actually have that, so um, we're going to save this file, and uh, WinSCP should automatically sync it for us, which it has. And then we're going to create a new file, and we're going to call it pass.txt. And that's going to open up in our text editor of choice. And what we need to put on the first line here is our NordVPN username, and on the second line, the NordVPN password. Obviously, I'm going to blow mine because I don't want you stealing my account. Oh, and just one more change we need to make after adding the pass.txt file is we need to add four clients to one to allow clients to use the VPN. So it works, you know, the way we want it to. And that's been synced across by WinSCP. So realistically, all we have to do now is turn off the packet squirrel, put the switch into position three, and then power it back on with with a uh, Ethernet cable out the back, and we should automatically be heading over the VPN. Just powered up the packet squirrel once again with the packet with the uh, switch in position free, which should be starting our open VPN uh, script. Should be hopefully. Um, we're currently blinking green, and it'll do that for about 10 to 15 seconds while it boots up, and then we should see a color change, which obviously you can't see, but I'm trying to uh, narrate it for you. Got a solid green light, meaning it's now booted. Getting a blue blinking light, and then a red, meaning that the payload should have been, you know, executed. Well, it's a red, it's more of a blinking amber, if I'm honest with you. Um, so we should now have an internet connection, but let's first check that we've got an IP address in the 172 range, so we know that we're being natted. And now we can go to myip.is to see that we do have a different IP address, and it is a UK IP address, but that is not my IP address. So we are successfully going out of NordVPN, and realistically, I'm actually going to leave that set up on that position free, because how many times you may go to a hotel or whatever, just, you can't trust any connection really, can you? So just having an automatic solution for going out over, um, going out over a VPN automatically. And even still, you could actually go ahead and plug this into uh, a switch and have multiple devices going off one ethernet port as well. Thanks for watching this video, guys. And thank you once again, all the guys over at Hack5 who've... Prov We're always so grateful when Hack5 actually reaches out and gives us one of these devices. 
it's always cool to play with it and I think it just lets everyone know about these devices. So that being said, if you are not subscribed to Hack5 and you have no idea what I'm holding, um, how did you miss them? Go and subscribe over to them, thank them on Twitter for me, I've already thanked them enough, like, thanks. <laughs> what, what more can I say? So guys, hope you enjoyed that video, but that being said, we still have our Thingbox giveaway going on right now, so if you click over here, this little video here, click on that and it'll tell you how to enter and see if you can win one of these. We'd also like to thank NordVPN for providing the VPN connectivity for this device, so we actually had a server to go out to and have our connection totally encrypted. If you want to check them out, we actually have got a link down below where you get an actual discount on NordVPN. It's like 72% off a two year package, so definitely one to go for. Um, yeah, if you go and check those out, it'd be a massive help to us and it'd also let them know that, you know, you guys appreciate them for uh, hooking us up.